Great. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining this webinar. My name is Caroline. I have been in the industry writing clinical study reports for six years. I've written CSRs both within the pharmaceutical industry and also within the medical device industry, both early phase studies, pivotal studies, post-marketing studies, and I've probably written about 20 CSRs. The last three years of my career, I've been independent, and I've done work with multiple different clients. So I've seen the way that some companies do things very similarly, but also ways that companies approach CSRs a little bit differently. So as we go through this presentation, I'm going to kind of provide a little bit of insight on how some companies do things a bit differently from others. So some of the things that we're going to cover in this course, so talking about how to actually translate some prior documents and then all of the data that you receive from a study into developing a comprehensive clinical study report. We're going to talk about the elements required for the CSR, so both from the CSR body and also the appendices. We're going to talk about the different types of statistical outputs and how to handle those results within the document, and also just looking at how a CSR may differ between early phase studies to later phase studies, and then how the use of style guides and templates can really help teams create CSRs in a way that's more effective and efficient. So when you first think about writing any document, including CSRs, you really need to think about your writing style. So how are you supposed to write this document, and who are you actually writing it for? So the audience of a CSR is quite diverse. So kind of your main audience would be a regulatory reviewer. So this can be um, a team from the FDA, from the European Medicines Association, from any sort of health authority, from any nation that you're actually submitting this document to. But you also may submit a clinical study report to a contract research organization or to your study site personnel. Um, a lot of companies also use their clinical study report as kind of the starting point for other things that they do at their company. So I've seen a lot of times companies will send their CSR over to their scientific communications team, and they'll use that to start developing a manuscript. They may use this as the basis for your clinicaltrials.gov posting. And it's really important to make sure that anyone that's actually looking at this document is going to read it in the same way and understand the data and the conclusions in the same way. So how do you do this? So one thing you should do is use terminology that's familiar to your audience. So making sure you're using specific terminology that's either standard in your field, not making up different terms to describe things different ways, using that consistent terminology throughout the document and also just making sure you're writing to inform rather to impress. Unlike, say, fiction writing, when you're writing a regulatory document, it's very important to be as clear and concise as possible. You can also really use formatting to your advantage, so making sure you're laying out the document in a way that flows well and using consistent styles. Using a template is one way that can help you do that, and we'll talk a lot about templates in just a bit. Also understanding that in a regulatory document, there are a lot of cross-links, both within a document and then sometimes to other documents. So really understanding how you can use that cross-linking to your advantage. So reducing redundancies and just making it clear if a reviewer wants to look at data in this section and it's relevant to data in another section, how you can use hyperlinks to basically make it easier for that reviewer. And I think the most important thing is letting someone else review your work. And I think this goes without saying for a document like a CSR, because it's such a collaborative process just to develop the document, you're going to have a lot of team members that are really helping you develop that document and reviewing that document before it's approved. And this will really help you make sure that any sort of issues with flow and grammar are picked up. And then also, if something just isn't quite clear, having reviewers from different functions can really help make sure that that final document is very clear and won't be misinterpreted in any way. So let's talk a bit about style guides and templates, just why they're so important and what a standard style guide and template might contain. The concept of styles, it really encompasses a lot of things. So some examples are just how your headers are organized, spacing between headers and text, your paragraph style, your reference style, how are you actually putting in-text citations within your text, and just more general conventions used while writing. 
often companies have style guides that are based on the American Medical Association manual of style. That's kind of the standard in the industry. But oftentimes companies will actually, within their style guides, have some kind of company-specific terminology that they prefer to use so that there's consistency both within a document and then amongst documents that their company develops. So again, these are company-specific documents, and they contain rules for generating a document in your company. So typically, each company will have one style guide so that a documents across the company are written in a standardized kind of format and standardized terminology. And it really creates standardization across documents in a submission. So this really helps your reviewer when they're looking at a bunch of different documents as part of a submission when they see that consistent style, consistent terminology. It removes a lot of distractions that could kind of otherwise slow down the review process. So your end result is you have documents that are easy to read and well organized. So a company's style guide can contain a ton of different standards. 